Good morning. Good morning, Pastor. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And we are blessed once again to be found in the house of prayer. Thank God for each of you here in the sanctuary. And we also praise God for our online worshipers. We pray God richest blessings upon each and every one of you. So why are we here today? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's yeah, check and make, want to make sure I'm in the right place. Because the, the scripture tells us in Psalm number 100 to make a joyful noise. That's right. That's right. And to the Lord. So, even, even if you can't carry a tune in a bucket, you can make a joyful noise. And to the Lord. You don't have to be trained as Julie are to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You, you, you don't have to have a special seminary to gre- degree to come into his presence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. The Paul said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all of you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Uh-huh. All the time. All the Serve time. The Lord Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, so, so we thought I was just going to rush through the scripture and, and see if, if I had to just do the scripture to see if we serve the Lord with gladness this morning. That's right. All right. Come before his presence with singing. We have our young people seated behind us. Yeah. We will be coming before his presence with singing. Yeah. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And not we ourselves. That's right. That's right. Oh, that be another hesitation for me. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. That's right. That's there right. are no self-made people in the kingdom of God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. For we should not act like we're doing God a favor by showing up. That's it right. is He That's that right. has made us, All about God. and not we ourselves. We are His people. That's right. Oh, now wait a minute! I thought that was a shout to you right there. We are His people. That's right. And the sheep of His pastor. How many people are glad today that you belong to God? Yeah. We are. His people and the sheep of his pastor. So when you think about everything the psalmist has said up to this point, then you can enter into his gates with thanksgiving. You see, the way you enter into his gates with thanksgiving is that you're thankful before you get to the gate. That's right. When you're thankful before you get to the gate, then you can come into the gate with thanksgiving. Enter his court with praise. Thank Be you. thankful unto him Thank you. and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth. His truth. His truth. Uh, the songwriter said, Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. His truth endureth to all generations. That's right. So that same religion, yeah, I give him a, give him a little speech for you. That same religion that was good for my mother, that same religion that was good for my father, that same religion that was good for Paul and Silas is good enough for me. Uh, because his truth endures to all generations. As always, we acknowledge that we don't own the right to the music that we will be sharing in this morning's worship, but we thank God for those who shared their gifts with the kingdom so that we might worship with them in spirit and in truth. So how many of you want the Lord to come by here today? Yeah! So since since it's February and since it's Black History Month, instead of uh, saying come by here, we're going to say kumbaya. (laughs) 
That work. That work. Well, even if it's not all right, you're gonna do it anyway. <laughs>
morning. Good morning. We stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. Great job. This morning, I will read from the book First John, fourth chapter, eight verse. And it reads, "Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love." I just read First John, fourth chapter, and the eight verse. May God bless the reader and hearers of his word. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. God, thank you for everything and bringing us. Amen.
refer to the days of the sanctuary choir being in the green room. I kind of let it slip my memory about the days when the youth choir was in the green room. <laughs> but we, uh, we thank God for our history. Uh, a lot of history has come through Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church. Um, we would not be here today had it not been for those who went before us. I would like to thank the members who went to Oakdale to the Rising Star Missionary Baptist Church on last night. Church family, I want you to know that our choir represented us very well on last night. Um, thank you to Sister Massett for driving the van on last night. And then just for everyone, for all that you do, for the Good Hope family, we are so grateful. Amen. On next Sunday, March 3rd, 2024, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Pastor Earl and Sister Erica Williams will be celebrating their fifth year appreciation at the Christian Missionary Baptist Church of Bunky, Louisiana. Wow. Amen. I mean, I, I wish he was still here too, but the Lord moved him to another assignment so we can celebrate the fact that Pastor Earl has been pastoring for five years. Amen. The guest speaker will be Reverend Dexter Compton, Sr., pastor of Amazon Kingdom Focused Baptist Church of Bunky, Louisiana. So again, that's next Sunday, March 3rd at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So let everyone who is able support our own Pastor Earl Williams. Amen. Amen. It's giving time. <laughs> God has been so good to us yes. through the years. And when someone is good to us, we ought to tell them thank you. Uh, I was just reminded of something that happened to me this morning. When, uh, when I, was, I was standing on the steps with a uh, couple of young men who were seated in the choir, my wife came and adjusted my collar because I was like, oh, your tie show, let me straighten your collar out. And I said to her, thank you. But I didn't say it loud enough where the young men could hear me. So one of the young men, young brother Makai, looked at me and said, tell her thank you. <laughs> He's not even paying attention to me right now. But even, he stopped playing long enough to tell me. To tell, tell her thank you. I said, I did tell her thank you. Well, I didn't hear you. So he told me again, tell her thank you. He insisted, since he didn't hear me. Why did I bring that up? Because even a child knows that when someone does something, you say thank you. So when we say enter into his gates with thanksgiving, we say thank you by giving. A uh, long way around to get to the point. But anyway, we thank God for this opportunity to give. So as we ask his blessings upon this time of giving, let us lift up our offerings unto the Lord. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity that you've given to us to return to you a portion of that with which you have blessed us. It already belongs to you, for your word tells us the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. But as an act of gratitude to you, Heavenly Father, we give back to your kingdom. <coughs> Father, we ask that you will bless each gift, that you will bless each giver, bless those who have a desire to give but are not able to at this time. We ask 
Heavenly Father, that you will consecrate these gifts so that we might use them for your kingdom and for your glory. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
your attention to Daniel chapter 1. Remain seated because we're not going to read the whole chapter at one time. But we are going to move through this chapter on today. So you'll need to Keep your Bibles open, whether they be paper or electronic. <laughs> Keep your Bibles open so that we may move through this text together. Daniel chapter 1. And on this last Sunday of Black History Month, as well as this Youth Sunday, we're going to tag this text, Know Who You Are. Amen. Know Who You Are. The main characters in today's text are young Hebrew men, four young Hebrew men, who had been taken from their native land of Israel and brought into captivity in a foreign land, Babylon. Does that sound familiar to anybody being taken from your native land? It might not have happened to you, but when we look back over our history, being taken from our native land and brought to another place. As we move through this text and look at their example, what we will see is that when the Lord has his hand on you, you can be successful wherever you go. Amen. But part of that success requires that you know who you are. Just because you change places, it doesn't mean that you have to change identity. You must know who you are. So I, I want to list three points before us and then we'll be out of the way. The first point is recognize who you are. That's right. Recognize who you are. Notice how these young men were described in verses 3 and 4 of Daniel chapter 1. Beginning in verse 3, it says, Then the king ordered Astanaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites. Number one, they were from the royal family and the nobility. Number two, they were young men without any physical defect. Handsome showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. You see, as these men, young men were described, they were somebody. Uh, they were of royal lineage. They were good-looking. They were intelligent. They were able to catch on to things quickly and they were qualified. Now understand something, just because you're qualified, it doesn't mean that everybody will recognize the fact that you're qualified. But as long as you know who you are, it doesn't matter what other folks think about your qualifications. You must recognize who 
you are. Just because you don't live up to somebody else's standard, it doesn't mean that you're not living up to God's standard. So you need to recognize. You know how it is when, when somebody does something and seems like people aren't really paying attention or give them, giving them their profit, and you better recognize. Well, you know, you're not talking about you better recognize somebody else, but what I'm saying to you in order to know who you are, you need to recognize yourself. Recognize who you are. Now, if we look at verse number six, something happened. Among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. But the chief official gave them new names. To Daniel, the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. Mm. That's right. The prince of the units, the chief officials, gave these young men from Israel new names. All right. The names Daniel, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael were related to the God of Israel. That's right. But the name Belteshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were related to the gods of Babylon. The chief official thought that they could change these young men by changing their name. But when you know who you are, it doesn't matter what other people call you. Anybody here ever been called out your name? Anybody here ever been called everything but a child of God? Oh, as a people, we know back in the day and even today, there were some names. That we were called because people tried to change our concept of who we are, were. But there were some folk, there were some folk here in Good Hope, there were some folk throughout this land who recognized that it ain't what you call me, but it's what I answer to. So when people start to call you something that you know you are not, then you need to recognize who you are and then you don't let what other people say about you be a problem. You, you, you need to recognize. Yeah. Look in the mirror. Go home, look in the mirror and tell yourself you better recognize. You need to know. Who you are. Not only do you need to recognize who you are, but you need to resist changing to be like other people. Be the best you that you can be. As my brother's North Carolina license plate says, be yourself. <laughs> you have to resist changing to be like other people. Now, Daniel, mm -hmm. Hananiah, mm -hmm. Mishael, and Azariah, like the other young men that had been brought in not only from Israel, but throughout the world, they were offered a portion of the king's meat. They were given a place at the king's table. Now I'm sure plenty of them looked at that good food that the king was serving up. They looked at the good wine that the king was serving up and they couldn't wait All right. to get a taste of the best that Babylon had to offer. But just because it's the best the world has to offer, 
it doesn't mean that it's the best for you. So in verse number 8, Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Because Daniel knew who he was. He resisted changing to be like the other young men around him. Peer pressure. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Or sometimes even pressure from someone in authority yeah. can test you to change who yeah. you are. Yeah, yeah. But trying to fit in is not always a good choice. That's right, it depends on what you're trying to fit into. <laughs> but fitting in might not always be a good choice. Yeah, yeah. Young people, as you, go, I, I remember when I was in school, the, the big thing uh, when I was in school was Azad shirts and <laughs> Levi's jeans. That wasn't what I was wearing. <laughs> And I went to my parents and told them that everybody else was wearing Isaiah <laughs> shirts and Levi's jeans. Well, when I got my own money, I was able to But I so wanted to be like the other people in my class. I wanted to be like the classmates who were driving new cars to school because their parents bought them new cars. Now, going to Pineville High, I had a couple of members of the band. One had a red Mustang. The other had a gray Mustang. They had the rebel color Mustang, but, but I, I was riding Mr. Rowley's bus. <laughs> Uh, I might not have been wearing the shirt with the alligator on. I might not have been wearing the Levi's jeans, but I discovered that by being myself, I, I discovered by keeping my head in the books, I discovered that I had something that other folks who were wearing. So while I'm training and trying to change to be like them, they're trying to get the GPA that I have. Uh, when you recognize who you are, then you need to resist the temptation to change and be like other people. Have enough confidence in who you are. Have enough confidence in yourself that you don't have to worry about what other folks think. That's it. Amen. Recognize who you are. Resist changing to be like other people. And thirdly, realize your potential. Amen. Realize your potential. Because they recognize who they were. And they resisted changing to be like others. These young men were able to realize their potential. Let's look down at verse number 17. Look at what happened because they weren't trying to be like everybody else. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them into his service, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. 
The king talked with them and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. Because they knew who they were. They recognized who they were. They resisted the temptation to change to be like everyone else. And as a result, God blessed them. As a result, God elevated them. Uh, when you do you and people see you doing you and the favor of God is upon you because you're doing you then God will begin to work through you and you will be able to recognize your full potential in him Stop going around trying to be a cheap imitation of somebody else when you are the original masterpiece that God created you to be. Because what can happen to you if you don't know who you are and you try to be someone other than who God created you to be, you can miss out on what God has for you. So I, I'm getting ready to close it out. You, you need to recognize who you are. You, you need to resist the temptation to change. And you need to reach out and achieve your full potential. So as we come to the close of Black History Month, we must recognize who we are, not just in February, but all year long. Black history is not just black history. It's American history. It's world history. Just because some people may refuse to recognize what our people have accomplished, we should not fail to recognize our accomplishments. Acknowledge who God created you to be. And resist the temptation to change because of peer pressure or other societal influences. The previous two messages we shared were the Lord has plans for you and use what the Lord has given you. My brothers and sisters, we must work to realize our God-given potential. <sighs> mm. I, I was sticking to my nose pretty good, but I, I could get through it. Don't try to be the best African American man you can be. All right. Don't try to be the best African American woman you can be. Because the bottom line is it's not about being the best African American. It's not about the be being the best of any other ethnicity, but it's about being the best person that you can be. It's not, how did Dr. King say it? It's not based upon the color of your skin, but it's based on the content of your character. So it's not about me being better or, any, or being worse than anybody else, but it's about me being the best me that I can be. Why? Because the Lord has plans for me. Just like the Lord has plans for you. Why? Because God has given me something and God has given you something. So each and every one of us ought to work to use what God has given us. 
And if you know anything about the Lord, he's not a respecter of persons. He don't care if you're rich or poor. He don't care if you're short or tall. He doesn't care what color your skin is. He doesn't care how much money you have in your pocket. He doesn't care about the house that you live in, but what he cares about is what's on the inside. He cares about you. And he wants you to be everything that he has placed in you to be. The 13th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution may have ended physical slavery. But we must still fight against mental slavery. Yes. Some people are free in the natural. But they're in bondage in their... Well, what did George Meyer say? The battleground is in the, in the mind. So there are some people who are experiencing mental slavery. They don't understand that whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So they might not have shackles on their hands, they might not have shackles on their feet, but they have shackles on their mind. Take the shackles off your mind so you can be who God called you to be. Take the shackles off your mind so you can have what God desires for you to have. In other words, Know who you are. Because sometimes you might be looking down on yourself when other folk are looking up to you. Not only do we have to overcome mental slavery, but we must also come over overcome economic slavery. We need to overcome educational slavery. We need to even overcome electoral slavery. Oh, you know there are some folk who are trying to limit our ability to make a difference at the poll. We have some work to do. Uh, because there are some folk who just want to take you out of one type of body to put you in. Uh, you, know, you, you, you may have heard of this. Uh, there are some folks who don't mind us being off the physical plantation. Yeah. But they want to put us on a political yeah. plantation. They want us to be dependent. Now see, this, this, is, this is where my politics get kind of skewed. Because I kind of agree at times with the party that says that we don't need so many handouts when we can... Just get a hand. Yeah. Up. So we should not be beholden to government if we don't need to be beholden to government. Because that's just another part, another form of keeping up in bondage. They don't want us to remember Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Black Wall Street. They don't want us to remember what happened in Wilmington, North Carolina. But my brothers and my sisters, I want you to know on today that we still have some work to do. Yeah. 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 Oh, Lord. I, I said I was coming to a close. Huh? I guess the Baptist preaching is not coming out today. Stop blaming everything on the man. It's easy to sit back and blame somebody else for our problems when we're not trying to do anything about them ourselves. Take some personal responsibility. It seems like we live in an age today where if it's your child, it's your problem. Remember back in the day that when you walked around the neighborhood, every mama was your mama? Every daddy was your daddy? And if you messed up, you might be three, four blocks away from home. You got, one of those old mothers saw you and they took care of you when they saw you. And before you could get home, they had gotten on the phone and called your mama. And then when you got home, you got another one. 
We need to get back to understanding that we're all in this together. And if one child succeeds, then we all can succeed. If one child fails, we can all fail. We need to look out for each other. We need to get back to the sense of community that we used to have. We shouldn't be looking down our noses because we think that we've arrived. Okay, I'm getting back to my notes now. <laughs> we have made significant progress. But yet, we can't rest. Because there's still more to do. But it's hard for us to help somebody else if we haven't helped ourselves. And it's hard for us to help ourselves unless we first know who we are. So on today, see what the Hebrew boys were able to accomplish in Babylon. They were able to accomplish that because they knew who they were. Uh, just because they knew who they were, that didn't stop Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah from going into the fiery furnace. But when they went into the fiery furnace, when, when Neb looked in the fiery furnace, he said, we put in three, but now I see four. And the fourth one looks like the son of man. Just because you know who you are, it doesn't mean you won't go through anything, but what it does mean that when you know who you are and you know who you are, when you go through, you're not going to go through it by yourself. But the Lord will step right in the fire with you. And when you come out, your clothes will not be thin. When you come out, your hair will not be thin. When you come out, you won't even smell like smoke. When the haters try to hate on you and they're getting high on their haterade, you don't have to worry about it when you know who you are because whatever trap they set for you, they're actually setting it for themselves. Daniel knew who he was. But that didn't stop Daniel from going into the lion's den for being who he was. But the difference was, Daniel knowing who he was didn't stop him from going into the lion's den. But when he got in the lion's den, he was able to take a nap in the lion's den because the Lord closed the lion's mouth. I want you to know today that the Lord is getting ready to shut the mouth on your behalf so you just need to hang in there and know who you are. Don't, don't try to worry about the folk who are trying to set you up. Don't worry about the folk who are hating on you. Because guess what happened? In the case of Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Mishael and Azariah, when they came out of the fire, they met through the other folk in the fire so they could see that the fire really was hot. When Daniel came out of the lion's den and there he had those other folk thrown in the lion's den, the same lions who were a pillow for Daniel to lay his head on tore up the other folk before they could even hit the bottom of the sea. When you know that you know that you know who you are, when you know that you know that you have the Lord on your side, then you don't have to worry about being like anybody else. When Jesus was in the wilderness and the devil came to him and said, if you be the son of God, Jesus didn't need to consult with anybody because he knew who he was. When Jesus was on the cross between two thieves and one of the thieves said to him, if you are the son of God, then save yourself and while you're at it, save us too because Jesus knew who he was. He didn't have to consult with the thief to find out who he was. But he just went on doing what God had called him to do. And even though knowing who he was meant he had to go through Calvary, even though knowing who he was meant he had to go through the tomb, early on Sunday morning, he got up. 
And the word says God has given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every name is about. And that's every time my church says that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Just like those people boys knew who they were. Just like Jesus knows who he is. I encourage you today, my brothers and my sisters. Know who you are. I do now extend the invitation to discipleship as we stand all over the building. Do you know who you are today? There is a question that I asked in a sermon a few years ago. We ask the question, we make the statement, it's good to know Jesus. And it is. But there's a bigger question than the question of do you know Jesus? The bigger question is, does Jesus know you? In Matthew chapter 7, there were some folks who came to Jesus at the judgment and said, Lord, Lord, didn't I? And Jesus' response to them was, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work in iniquity. There's some folk who think they know Jesus. But Jesus doesn't know them. Only if they're going to church every Sunday. Going to Bible study. Midweek service. They claim to know Jesus, but does Jesus know them? There are people standing in the pulpit preaching his word every Sunday. Telling you that you need, need to get to know Jesus, but Jesus doesn't know them. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? Has He joined with you by the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit who bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. First step in the process is to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The scripture says, You shall be saved. Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Have you believed on him today? Have you confessed your sins to him and repented of those sins and asked him for forgiveness? Invited him to come into your life, not just as your Savior, but as your Lord. I'm not asking if your name is on a church roll. I'm asking if your name is on the church roll. A church roll. I have an app on my phone right now. And I can go to my phone and open up that app, sign in, and get a list of everybody who's in Good Hope's computer system. But I can't go to heaven and show them that app. Just because your name is in my app doesn't mean that your name is in the book. As a matter of fact, let me just go ahead and press it further. Just because I have that, that doesn't mean that I have access. Come on. Come on. But it's only that book, that book of the Lamb of God, that matters. Is your name written there? Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that your name is in his book? I 
invite you to come today. If you need to ensure that your name is in that book, I invite you to come right now. My brothers and sisters, if you look around at what's happening in our world today, and you know anything about God's prophetic word, you know that time is getting short. That's right. There was never a time for playing in church. But it is critical right now that we are no longer satisfied with just having church. But we're determined to be the church. Being the church is not what happens inside these four walls. Being the church involves what goes on outside of those four walls. And when we do what we need to do as the church outside these four walls, then there are other people who can come to know this Jesus that we love so much. Secondly, if you're looking for a church home and the Spirit of God has impressed upon your heart to become a part of this church family, we invite you to come. Not because the pastor invited you, not because your neighbor invited you, not because your friend invited you, but because the Holy Spirit said, this is where I want you to be. If you want to become a part of this fellowship, if you want to come to a perfect church, don't come here. If you want to follow a perfect pastor, don't come here. We're not a perfect church. I'm not a perfect pastor, but we serve a perfect God. We're trying to be more like him every day. We're trying to have his word go forth. We're praying that his worship go forth in such a way that we don't bring glory to Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church, but we bring glory to God. And lastly, if you are in the need of prayer, you would like to approach the altar. God is already moving. God is already moving in your situation. God is already operating on your behalf. When you come, come in faith, believing the letter to the Hebrews lets us know without faith, it is impossible to please God. And if you come to him, you must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God hears and answers prayer. getting a little emotional right now because I see young people at this altar. We've been praying, we've been asking God to touch young people, to touch our youth. I don't know why they're here at the altar right now. God does. I don't know if I'll see any of the young people again at this altar, but you're here now. God has something for you. And we're blessed to have you in our midst today. Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Still in the pews, if you could just begin to 
talk to God right now in your own way as the Holy Spirit places it in your spirit. Pray for that which the Lord lays on your heart.
spoke with Pastor last, last Sunday morning. I was in an accident on a on a Valentine's Day, and I knew they had a Rapids and our MacArthur coming back to our home here in Pineville. I was making a left turn, and I was hit by a, a hundred of noise. And you know, I have this big red truck, big old truck, and I, it knocked me almost, bent my truck around and knocked me almost uh, at least 30 feet to the other side, all the way across the intersection and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, just spin me around, you know, stuff. So my seatbelts helped me in the truck, you know, while I was doing all of this. And, uh, after they get the police report, I think that was like the, that Friday. Because I wonder, you know, what was going on. And uh, they had said that I was trying to cross the intersection. You know, a lot of people go to that area going from Valley Refuge Road to, uh, to Pineville. You know, I was going to turn back left. But the police, they kept saying that I was going across the intersection, you know, you would go to Red Heath that way. And wouldn't know where I was going there in the police report. And they said, multiple eyewitness said that I was in the, that uh, they didn't even say I was in the turning lane, you know. They just said I run the red light and a car coming coming south from behind the uh, hit me, you know. And uh, on the police report, when I got a police report, they said multiple witnesses stated that I was in the wrong, that I was the one to run the red light. And uh, I talked to the pastor Sunday morning, and I talked to uh, him, uh, you know, after church, and Brother Door, you know, I talked to him, what should I do? <laughs> so, you know, but I went and looked around, you know, the area, the area last Saturday, I went and looked at the area, took pictures of the, Marking, you know, the highways and stuff, trying to figure whether I, did I have a lapse or something, you know. I didn't know, but they, they, had, they had, uh, in the final report, they had charged me with, uh, you know, that I was at fault of everything, so I was going to be responsible for fixing both cars and stuff. And uh, I talked to the last Sunday. And I, I know I set up a, re, a meeting with them on Monday night because uh, from set from Friday until Monday you couldn't see them because the police when they wrote the report was working a six to six shift in the evening, six to six uh, in the morning. So I went there uh, Monday evening and uh, talked to him and the desk sergeant, you know, and told them you know my side of the story. And I then I told him I said. I think I think pretty sure it's a it's a camera, you know, at the mobile station at the corner. Mm -hmm. And I, I went there and asked the guy at the mobile station, you know, <laughs> did he hear the accident or see anything? He said, no. Uh -oh. but I heard a big boom. But he said, oh, I got a video. I was in the morning, you know, while I was taking pictures, he said, uh, come back at, uh, at uh, 1245, because I changed shift then. And when I went in the store, another guy was in the counter, he said, uh, I said, told him what I was looking for, the guy was looking for, he said, oh, he's been there looking at video. I said, oh, let me get back here, you know. <laughs> and I looked, and, you know, all I see was the top of the car coming speeding going south on MacArthur, the top of the car. I mean, it was really going fast. And uh, so I, I went back to the police for Monday evening once they got on shift. And uh, they, uh, they, we went home, me and my wife, we went home, and he told us, you, the this sergeant sent the policeman out to the mobile station. And about a half hour later, they called me and said it was exactly as you said. Aww. She totally left the real life like one by 50 miles an hour. I want this boy to see it, you know. And I just thank God, and as the pastor was saying, you know, if you know God, then know yourself. Because, because I, was, I was dying, you know. So I was kind of out of it, man, when I got here, because, you know, I 
all really shook up about it, but uh, but you know, it was uh, I, I was 70, 80 percent sure that I hadn't did anything wrong, but you know, the dog came good, you know, until I saw the video, you know, and, and uh, they read the report Tuesday morning. They had to report for me to pick up Tuesday morning after going there Monday night, and they had. You know, stated it in the heaven just as I said, you know, and that's wow. the fault of the driver that ran through the life. Right. And I thank the church for all the prayers and support during that time. Thank you to the pastor here, our pastor, and his brother Dor. They really helped me out and gave it encouragement, you know, to go and do it myself. And, see, um, and I thank all the church members for all the prayers, those, you know, that I didn't get to inform everybody, but those that I informed, you know, that I was in an accident. Amen. Thank you very much. God continues to, to bless and keep all of us. Sets of hand signals in the back, so they're they're ready. No, I was I was asking, are they ready? I know what you were saying. <laughs> they're ready. Okay. All right. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you have allowed to take place. Lord God, we thank you for your word. For your word, when it makes entrance, it gives light and understanding even unto the simple. So, Father God, based upon what you have shared with us today through your Holy Spirit, allow us to know exactly who we are in you. And we realize who we are as we resist the temptation to be try to be like somebody else and that we we reach out to that which you have called us to do. And we recognize that you have a purpose for us and we realize the potential that you have given us. So now, Father God, we thank you for the food that we are about to receive. Bless it that it may be nourishing to our bodies. Bless the hands that prepare it. Father, we pray that you will purify it from any impurities, Father God, that we may be built physically as well as spiritually. And now, Father God, as we prepare to leave this place, may we never leave your presence. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. bless you. Please stop by the fellowship hall to receive a black history appropriate. <laughs> <laughs>